for regression in R. So here's an example. I'm looking at 116 sparrows, so birds, uh, from Kent Island. And I'm interested in the relationship between their weight and their wing length. And so that's what I have plotted here. On the x-axis, I have their wing length. On the y-axis, I have the weight. And each of these points corresponds to one of those 116 sparrows that I've sampled from this island. And so this blue line represents the regression model that I fit, looking at the relationship between weight and wing length. And the shaded region here represents some uncertainty. And so that's where the standard error of, of beta hat 1 comes into play. So beta hat 1 represents the slope of this line. Beta hat 0 represents where this line would intersect with 0. And the standard error is basically how much we expect the sample slope to vary from one random sample to another. So how can we quantify how much we'd expect the slope to differ from one random sample to another? Well, here's some R code, and this top part should look familiar. This is exactly what we've been fitting so far, what you just did in the lab. So I say that I specify that I want to fit a linear regression. I set my engine. I'd like to use LM as my engine. And then if you recall, in, in the previous uh, version that I've shown you, you created an object, often called something like LM underscore spec, with this part, and used that as the first argument of the fit function. But if you recall how the pipe works, it will output, the pipe will take whatever this uh, previous part outputs and it'll stick it in the first argument of the subsequent function. And so this code here is equivalent to if I had saved this as a separate object and then called that object as the first, uh, first argument of the fit function. And so this does the same thing, it, it just does it in uh, in, in a couple of lines instead of splitting it up. Often if I'm just fitting a single model, I'll do it like this where I'll just specify it kind of as I go, so I'll have it as a chain of pipes. But if I'm fitting multiple models, and so I would be rewriting this part, this linear underscore reg set on engine LM multiple times, then I would just save that as an object to sort of save me some, some typing time. Often, uh, my kind of rule of thumb is if you're going to repeat something at least three times, uh, maybe kind of find a different way to, to, to write your code. And so since I'm just running the single model, I'm going to do it like this. But if I were running like three different models, I'd probably do it like we've done so far where I'd create this as its own object. Okay, so what I've highlighted here is a new function now that's going to give a little bit of extra output. So we created this fit object. And in the, when you were doing cross-validation, we used that fit object to calculate some metrics, uh, like the root mean squared error. But another kind of quantity of interest in linear regression uh, are the actual coefficients for the intercept and the slope. And so that's what the tidy function basically tidies up the output from the fit function to give us this nice data frame that includes the terms. And so these are the, the two parameters in my model, the intercept and the wing length, as well as the estimates for those. So these are the beta coefficients for those, the standard error, the t statistic, and the p-value. And so for beta hat 1, that's my beta coefficient for wing length, this is what I get. And so how can we quantify how much we'd expect the slope to differ? Well, we can use this standard error here, this 0.0347. And so now we have to think about how we can actually interpret this. And so we're going to step through kind of how do we decide if that standard error is big or small, um, or if, if, this is, if, if this is sort of a, a, a large effect or a small effect. So we can interpret this as the sample slope is more than 13 standard errors above a slope of zero. And the way we know that is because this statistic, the t statistic, is the ratio between the beta coefficient, which is in this estimate column, and the standard error, which is here. So if we took 0.467 and divided it by 0.0347, we would get 13.5. So the sample slope is more than 13 standard errors above a slope of zero. So the next question might be, how do we know what values of this statistic are worth paying attention to? So how do we know if that 13 is meaningful? 
And so that's where confidence intervals and p-values come in. So we can actually calculate, you can get your tidy function to give you confidence intervals uh, by using this conf.int equals true parameter within the tidy function. So using this argument here, conf.int equals true, we get two extra columns with the confidence intervals. And this is nice. You can, from the information that's just given here, you can actually calculate the confidence intervals. So all you need to calculate the confidence intervals are the estimate itself and the standard error, as well as how many parameters are in your model. But it's nice if R can do it for you. So using that conf.int equals true will add that to your tidy output. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to fit a linear model using the MT cars data frame. And I want you to predict miles per gallon, which is in the data frame as MPG, from weight, the WT variable. And so I want you to go ahead and fit that model using the tidy models framework. And then I want you to pull out the coefficients and confidence intervals using the tidy function demonstrated and interpret that result.
All right, go ahead and knit your file for it so that it saves and then uh, go on to the next lecture.